Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, law enforcement receive cash for feature handbook to help in the fight against financial crime. Ali Katanaz receives maiden test cap as first match begins and government opens new digital innovation hub in the Roseau Valley. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Welcome back. Ali Katanaz has received his maiden test cap as the first cycle pure Agabati test between India and the West Indies kicked off on Wednesday. West Indies won the toss and chose to bat, naming Atanas in the playing 11. Dominicans turned out in numbers to show support to the 24-year-old as he made his debut. GIS News caught up with some patrons as they entered the stadium on the opening day. Alex's sister, Miss Alexia Atanas, is overwhelmed with excitement for her brother. She is thankful for the support that she has seen so far from Dominicans. Ah, it's great. I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm happy. He has been wanting this all along and he got it. Support is an understatement. Support a lot of people, even from his community. The people, everybody, they're, they're coming out. So yeah, he's, he's got a great, great support. Like I told him last night, just go out there, put God first and everything else will follow. Mr. Julian Fontaine is a resident of Grand Bay, Ali Atanas's hometown. He's excited to be able to cheer on Atanas as he makes his test debut. You see me, I'm very excited and I'm proud to be here because I want to see Ali Atanas do good for the country and even for the rest of the world because everybody looking at him and everybody expects to, to get a century from him today. And I wish him luck and I'm going there to make sure that happens. I will shout for him and I will uh, upload them in everything. Another fan of the game, Mr. Elford Zavi, says this is a special moment for all Dominicans. It's always our hard desire to see our people performing to the, in the highest level, or at the highest level, to um, go into this type of things. And now he's doing his international debut. That is very, very good for us and for him also. And we just uh, hope that he is going to make us proud. We know that there is a lot of pressure over him, over 16,000 people in Dominica on his shoulder, plus um, people who are out of Dominica on his shoulder. But as he said, that he loved being under pressure. So I am there to take a look at him. And I know he's going to make us proud. Dance Porans, Mr. Gregoire Joseph and Mr. Jonas Joseph are hopeful that Ali can excel in his first international test innings. To be honest with you, that's the only reason I'm here to see uh, hopefully that he performed very well but uh, yeah that's why I'm here just to see him <laughs> um, any words of advice for him? um not as yet I don't want to jinx him not as yet okay. I just want to uh, hopefully that he perform and do very well but yeah, yeah it feels good to see a Dominic can make it after a long time I'm happy for him hopefully he can continue and do good and we came all the way from Boston just to see him. <laughs> Mr. Morris Cyrils says seeing Alik as the first Dominican batsman to play for the West Indies in years is an achievement for all Dominicans. It goes without saying that we're all pleased to, 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 to have that. We're all happy when Shil made it. We're happier when Norfield made it. We're happier still when Shil others made it. And then we have a one making after Irving as a batsman and make debut in Dominica and a fellow we've seen grown from under 13, under 15. And so some of us we are quite happy, we know the youngster and we are quite pleased to be here this morning. Any words of advice for him? Uh, advice? No, stay focused, concentrate and watch the ball. The Commonwealth of Dominica continues to fulfill its obligations to remove the incentive for criminal activity through cash seizure forfeiture. Dominica passed the Proceeds of Crime Amendment Act in May of 2013, becoming the first Eastern Caribbean country to pass a comprehensive civil asset recovery law. During a short ceremony on Wednesday, the Regional Security System Asset Recovery Unit presented copies of the Dominica Cash Forfeiture Handbook and the Dominica Cash Seizure Policy to representatives of law enforcement agencies, including the Police, Financial Intelligence Unit, Customs, the Director of Public Prosecution, and the Attorney General's Chambers. The Regional Security System Asset Recovery Unit embarked on a project with the Financial Intelligence Unit of the Commonwealth of Dominica over a year ago towards the publication of a comprehensive jurisdiction-specific and practical care seizure detention and forfeiture handbook. 
This handbook advances Dominica's alternative approach to crime fighting through attacking criminals where it hurts the most, their pockets. The Castilla Handbook serves as a guide for law enforcement agencies and officers in dealing with situations where cash is suspected of being derived or intended for illegal activities. The handbook outlines steps and procedures for seizing cash and the subsequent handling of such cases. Director of the Financial Intelligence Unit, Mr. McKelson Farrell, says since the introduction of civil recovery regime of the civil recovery regime in 2013, the fight against financial crimes has intensified. During this period, mechanisms have been implemented to strengthen the regime. For example, the opening of two accounts at the National Bank of Dominica, namely the proceeds of crime detained fund account and the asset forfeiture fund. Two, the development of a standardized cash breakdown sheet. Three, provision for disclaimer, and most recently, the enactment of the Magistrate Code of Procedure, SRO 9 of 2018. A continued priority of the Financial Intelligence Unit is combating financial crime, has been to promote, encourage, and enhance interagency cooperation with other law enforcement bodies. Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, says it is important to take away the incentive for those who commit financial crimes. Especially as it um, pertains to money laundering, that in order to deter those criminals, um, we have to ensure that they're hit hard. And you hit them hard, and I'm not sure whether that, that, that's the appropriate um, analogy or, or metaphor to use, but you have to ensure that you extract, you take away the profit from that enterprise. And that is why, in that regard, therefore, I want to really commend the efforts of the FIU in Dominica for ensuring over the years that over $10 million has been forfeited. And that money has been placed back into the fight against crime. The Dominica Association of Teachers, DAT, has launched its annual Teachers Summer Institute. The annual program is held in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, and its Canadian Teachers Federation. The two-week program will run from July 10 to 23 and will cover a variety of topics all aimed at the professional development of all teachers. Minister for Education, Honorable Octavia Alfred, says she is happy to see the program sustained for so many years. I'm very happy to see that this very important training component for our teachers has been sustained. We have grown and modernized, and I dare say maybe we've dropped in figures, and this is something we'll have to collaborate to work on between the DAT and the Ministry of Education, because sometimes the teachers who need the workshop, they're already on their way in the airport. <laughs> they out, no, but we have to pay attention to that because this is resources. We have resources being spent, and the people who are most in need of the training sometimes, they're the ones who do not attend. So, but I'm glad that this program is still here. And this is an example to many of how challenges can be managed with changes, and this is a true meaning of resilience. Minister Alfred reaffirmed government's pledge to build the capacity of all teachers, which will aid in the overall development of the country's students. Like other careers, there are those who are more natural at it than others. But even with those, the most natural teach, those with the most natural teaching ability, we must put in the time necessary to cultivate our innate talent. Personal growth and development are critical components that all teachers must embrace in order to maximize their potential. Classes look a lot different these days. Students are learning in new ways. So therefore, the support a teacher gives to students goes far to help them to consider their education. The Ministry of Education has a responsibility 
to implement programs and policies to build the capacity of our teachers so that they are able to deposit in their students the knowledge, skills, and attitude needed to make them well-rounded individuals who will grow up and live a productive and happy life. Canadian team leader Miss Anne Irvin says they are committed to doing their best to make the time spent here meaningful. We commit to doing our very best to collaborate with you to make this time valuable and instrumental in developing your and our teaching practices and consequently the learning of all of our students. Remember in the words of Mr. Ziegler, he said, if you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. And I believe that. This is your time, make it worthwhile. Project Overseas is our time together to reflect on and enhance our teaching practices. It's a good time to stop, give pause, reflection. How do we want to improve next year? We can all take that time. The government of Dominica, through the Ministry of Public Works, Public Utilities and the Digital Economy, have newly opened a digital innovation hub in the Rosa Valley constituency. 16 digital innovation hubs have now been erected across the island. The hubs form part of the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project, which aims to improve the lives of individuals in the region. Minister of State in the Ministry of Public Works, Public Utilities and the Digital Economy with a specific responsibility for public utilities, telecoms and broadcasting, Honorable Shakira Lockhart Hippolyte, says the project was to the tune of $75 million. The government of Dominica continues to introduce initiatives that will move the country forward into the digital age. All of this and more is being done under the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project, for which the government secured financing from the World Bank in the amount of $75 million. I am extremely happy for the residents of the Rosso Valley that we are able to have an innovation hub that will serve as a place where residents of the Rosso Valley can have a space to learn essential digital skills, web design, programming languages, and many other technology skills and courses that will allow for seamless integration into the new digital world. Parliamentary representative for the Roosevelt Valley constituency, Honorable Dr. Irving McIntyre, called on business owners in his constituency to take advantage of the new digital transformation. We from the Rose Valley, we have a lot of tourism activity going on here. So all these small businesses that are related to tourism, whether it's the vendors, whether it's the shops, whether it's the restaurants, we want everyone to take advantage of such training so that in terms of keeping your accounts and your records and just for the whole, for your business to thrive, you need all of those things to be in place. And the, it's beyond just getting, having your records and all of this, it's also a way of making things more efficient. One of the days where you have to be adding up things and it's paper and all of those days, we need things to be done quick. And this is where the digital transformation comes in in terms of having data and information to make certain decisions in the future. This is where the digital part comes in. One recipient, Ross Semper, was enrolled in Level 1, which included the beginner's digital training courses. He spoke of his experience. As a student of a secondary school, I was given the opportunity to, to learn the basic of Level 1 at the beginner's digital training courses right here in Trafalgar. There, I have learned about devices and their functions, communicating through different ways and many more. My experience was very fun and educative. Thanks to Mr. Dupi for being a wonderful teacher who also named me Dr. Ross and making this <laughs> class a success. You're watching National Focus. More when you return. Welcome back. 
Ten participants have successfully completed the From Offending to Achieving, that's the FOTA or FOTA program, 2022 to 2023. The graduation ceremony took place at the Social Center Model Preschool on July 7, followed by an exhibition displaying the work of the participants. The FOTA program engaged participants in social, academic, and technical skills. Coordinator of the photo program, Mr. David Toussaint, thanked partners for the project and advised students to use the experience gained with the program to overcome obstacles. Use this experience, skills and lessons learned to build strong to face whatever it is by life may continue to pelt at you. Go out into the world and play your part. Exemplary citizens and show positively wherever you may end up. The Social Center Board of Directors, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, the Magistrate Court, individuals, business places, parents and dedicated teachers who played a part in making today happen for these graduates, as I say, special, special thank you. Magistrate Miss Gloria Augustus delivered the feature address at the graduation ceremony. She recalled the inspiring story of the late Winston Earl Gordon, a musician of Trinidad who, whose journey is proof that success, success comes from hard work and determination. I recently learned of a story of a Mr. Winston Earl Gordon, a gifted musician from Trinidad and Tobago, who died recently. In paying tribute to him, a friend and past colleague said, that Mr. Winston had moved up from being a messenger in a bank to being a bank branch manager. If you do your research and read, you will get many examples of people who have excelled or moved up in, um, in their fields through hard work and determination. Some did not go to secondary school or university. What they had was a goal, passion, determination, and they did the work. The journey of a graduate, Jewel Jolly, was testimony to the success of the photo program. My name is Jewel Jolly, and for 15 months, I've been a student of the photo program. For years, I have felt I would better with my hands, and I would benefit from a skill program. I went to the Dominican Grammar School for three years, and although I enjoy my time there, I have never felt that like it was the right place for me. My first impression of the photo program was it is no different from the Dominica Grammar School. However, as weeks went on, I started to realize how wrong I was. Attending the program has taught me a lot of things. I have learned to believe in myself, I have increased my self-esteem, and I can say I have gained maturity. Valedictorian of the 2022-2023 photo program, Randall Paul, copped the awards for hospitality, literacy, numeracy, spirituality, social related and academic performance. He advised students to challenge themselves and aim for progress. My advice to my peers and every young individual out there is to challenge yourself and take everything you've learned from every experience, conversation and lesson plan with you. The real world makes the best of it. No, it's not going to be easy. No, will success knock on your door tomorrow night. But I want for you all to continue to make progress, whether it's in school, at work, or just becoming a better person in life. Always continue to make progress. The government of Dominica and the People's Republic of China witnessed two significant milestones in the continued advancement of healthcare at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital on Friday. The first was the signing ceremony of an agreement on peer to hospital cooperation mechanism and the launching ceremony of the Dominica China Cardiovascular Imaging and Telemedicine Center. Dr. Zhao Haipeng is Executive Vice President of Sun Yat Sen University and President of the first affiliated hospital at Sun Yat Sen University. Since 2009, China has sent medical teams to Dominica. Many members are from my first affiliate hospital, Sun Yat-sen University. Dr. Wu Dexi is one of them. During his three years stay, Dr. Wu has performed many cardiac operations first ever in Dominica and worked closely with his Dominica counterparts 
to establish Dominica's first cardiology department. With the support from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and National Health Commission in China, the first affiliate hospital, Sun Yat-sen University, was approved to undertake the project of Dominica China Cardiovascular Imaging Center. This is the milestone of medical collaboration between China and Dominica. Dr. Hai Peng says safeguarding the health of the people of Dominica is one of the goals of establishing the Dominica China Cardiovascular Imaging Center. The projects aim to promote the advancement of healthcare delivery at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital and build a team of competent physicians who are able to serve the better health and well being of people here. On February 9, 2023, our President Xi Jinping, in his letter to the members of the 19th batch of Chinese medical teams to Central African Republic, offered his recognition to the achievement of China's 60 years of international humanitarian medical support. President Xi pointed out the direction for international medical cooperation in the new era. In an age of unprecedented changes, global health, security, and the well-being of mankind call for a global community of health. Under the guidance of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and National Health Commission, the first affiliate hospital, Sun Yat-sen University, spared no efforts in construction of the Dominica China Cardiovascular Imaging Center to promote the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular diseases and the training of qualified medical professionals. Health Minister Honorable Kasani Laville said the establishment of the cutting-edge cardiovascular imaging center is the realization of a vision which will give hope to those dealing with cardiovascular challenges. Our cardiovascular center will provide a range of diagnostic interventions and aftercare also to ensure that all patients receive the best possible care throughout their journey. This center will feature advanced medical equipment, such as a Philips Affinity 70 ultrasound system, a Philips Lumify Portable Ultrasound, a mapping workstation for cardiac MRI and MRI contrast injector. This center also aims to strengthen academic exchange between the first affiliated hospital of Sun Yat-sen University and the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. The health minister says apart from providing personal care, the new cardiovascular center will become a hub for research and development. The new telemedicine room will feature a teleconferencing platform giving our locals the opportunity to discuss complex cases and procedures with the cardio team in China. This center stands not only as a testament to our dedication, but also as a testament to the trust placed in us by the community. With their faith in our abilities, we are tasked with the responsibility that we hold with utmost reverence. We vow to continually raise the bar in cardiovascular care delivering the latest treatments, techniques, and therapies to every patient that we serve. The Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt noted that the facilities and expertise being made available is a monumental step forward in the provision of specialized health care to Dominican citizens. This project is not simply about hybrid medical equipment or academic exchange. It is about providing our citizens with access to cutting-edge healthcare services right here at home in Dominica. I see this initiative as a reinforcement of the government's commitment to provide high-quality, universal health coverage to our citizens. We are creating a healthcare system that is people-centered and responsive to individual needs, one that also ensures equitable access to everyone, regardless of your socioeconomic background, and is efficient in the delivery of timely, targeted care to all Dominicans at all times. 
His Excellency Dr. Philbert Aaron has been appointed as Dominica's ambassador, permanent representative to the United Nations. He presented his credentials to the UN Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, at the UN headquarters in New York on July 6. Dr. Aaron holds a PhD in education, policy and leadership and brings a vast experience, knowledge and expertise to the position. Dr. Aaron deepened the relationship between Dominica and Venezuela and Latin America after Prime Minister Skerritt led in joining the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of our Americas, ALBA. Meanwhile, His Excellency Antonio Guterres expressed admiration for Dominica in its role in the movement of small island developing states and congratulated Prime Minister Skerritt on his chairmanship of CARICOM. Dominica became a member state of the United Nations on December 18, 1978. A new and innovative calendar of activities has been announced for FET Setan. The FET Setan 2023 committee, in collaboration with the parliamentary representative for the Maho constituency, Honorable Kasani Laville, hosted a ceremony on Monday morning to launch the act celebration. This year's celebration will be presented under the theme Building a Community Through Arts, Culture and Enterprise. Parliamentary representative for the Maho constituency, Honorable Kasani Laville, says he will continue in the footsteps of former member of parliament for the Maho constituency, Senator the Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, where community development is concerned. I recognize that good leaders and great leaders don't care. They are not preoccupied about the power that they are perceived to have, but instead their focus is on empowering their people empowering the people to be great, empowering the people to also be leaders, and in our case, to build community. And this is what the planning process has been about. And I'm grateful to be part and to play that role in the way that I have so far. The journey of organizing this event um, really was inspired by some conversations that I had with many of you in the community, particularly around carnival time. The Member of Parliament has commended the organizers for their efforts so far. He is hopeful that this year's FET Setan will be well executed given the committee's commitment and early preparation. It's about you, it's about us, and the Parliament is there to help. And I, I feel that it is time that we take responsibility for uh, the, the things that are really dear to us, and I know in our community, FET Sentan, FET Mao, it's really dear to us. And we have done a wonderful job in planning the activities and the events for FET Mao, FET Sentan 2023. Uh, I want to say a sincere thanks to the chair, obviously, and all of the various representatives of the various subcommittees and groups who have come forward Thursday after Thursday to plan and to prepare. It's not been easy. We're talking about people with their full-time jobs, not eight to four, but eight to six, eight to seven sometimes. And right after that, they are here coming to plan on behalf of the community. Fet Setan will host a number of events, both religious and entertainment. Among the activities are a domino league, a breakfast brunch, a Calypso Cadans extravaganza, which will honor Bell's combo, Massac Duive, all-day village fair and a summer cool-out to the premium cooler FET. The Eucharistic celebration for FET Setan will take place on July 26 at the St. Martin de Porres Roman Catholic Church in Canefield from 7 p.m. The celebration will culminate on July 30 with a blockorama on the Campbell Road. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominique on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I'm Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.